Good morning, second graders. Today is Tuesday, April 28th, and for today's learning video, instructional video, we will go through our same pattern. We're going to go over our learning targets for today. Um, with our final week of packets, it's going to be a new learning target every day. And so we'll go over those, and then we'll go over a couple of the worksheets together. Okay, let's get started. All right, so your reading for today says, I can use context clues to determine the meaning of unknown words in a text. And then for writing, you can write an opinion with evidence to support it. And then for math, you are identifying coins and their values, and like yesterday, and you are telling time to the hour and the minute. And that actually is going to be your standard for the rest of the week, okay? All right, so let's get started on the worksheets. So yesterday you were you read Pecos Bill in your reading, and for today you are going to be doing this worksheet, week five, day two, right there. Okay, so it says, when you see a word you don't know, look at the other words in the sentence. They can give you clues about what the word means. Sometimes other words in a sentence tell the definition or meaning of the word. I'm just reading from right up here. So let's give an example. The tops of trees in rainforest form a canopy or covering of leaves. So in that sentence right there, it basically tells you what a canopy is right after the word. But sometimes in other examples, other sentences, um, it gives an example that helps explain what the word means. So in the second sentence, it says the forest canopy is like a really big sun hat. So instead of saying a canopy is a covering of leaves, it compared it to a big sun hat to kind of give you an idea and a visual of what canopy means. Okay, so then the actual um, work that you need to do, you look at the underlined word in each sentence, Circle the other words that help you understand what the word means. So right here, I'm zooming in to number one. We can try doing that together. Okay, so number one says, many creatures or animals live in the rainforest. So the underlying word is creatures. So we need to think what words in that sentence tell us what creatures mean. Say, so, okay, so I'll read it one more time. Many creatures or animals live in the rainforest. So if we could think, many creatures or animals live in the rainforest. What words tell us what creatures mean? Yes, it's basically exactly what that first example was. It gave us the definition right after the word. So here's the word creatures, and we would circle or animals because the or animals tells us Creatures are animals. It's another word for animals. Okay, should we do one more together? Okay, let's do a different one. Um, okay, let's do this one. This is a little trickier. Number five. Tiny amphibians, such as frogs, hide in the leaves. So in that sentence, the underlined word is amphibians. That big long word there. Okay. So amphibians, such as frogs, hide in the leaves. So you would circle such as frogs, because such as frogs is telling you amphibians are frogs, okay? So go through and do all of those sentences on that first worksheet for reading. Okay, and then number two for writing, you're going to read the sentence below and then answer the big questions. So big and small nocturnal animals only come out at night is that first sentence. So you're using your context clues again and you're going to answer questions about the word nocturnal. Okay and then on the other side of that same page you're focusing on the word prey. So the question says, wild cats hunt for prey or food after dark, and then answer questions number three and four. Okay, that's your writing worksheet for today. Let's go to math. 
So in math, day two, your first worksheet is telling time, and it's to the hour and half hour. And before school was shut down, a lot of you got pretty proficient to that level where you're able to tell time to the half hour. Okay, don't forget, when we do tell time to the half hour using my big clock, you always, always, when it's half hour time, the hour hand is in the middle between two numbers because it's halfway around the clock. So it goes from one, where the hour hand is on the one because it's on the hour, and then you go around the clock and as the minute hand moves, the hour hand slowly moves with it. So when we're halfway around the clock to the next hour, of course, the hour hand is gonna be halfway between two numbers. So like we practice in class, you always, always look at where the hour hand is and go back, okay? So that's your first step to say the first number. This would be one, the hour is one. And then when we're on the half hour time, six stands for 30. And if you forget, or if you're ever not sure what that number stands for in minutes, you can always count around the clock by fives. As you can see on my big clock, it has five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So just go around counting the clock and so to figure out the minute hand, what it stands for. And it's on the six, so it stands for 30. Okay, so right here, right here, um, we are going to have the time saying 130, okay? Okay, so now let's go over the coin worksheet together. It's basically that same pattern that we did yesterday where you count the coins in each rectangle here on this first page, and then whatever you discover counting uh, what the value is, you go into your hundreds chart and color in the correct value there, and it makes a mystery picture, okay? All right, you guys, so that's all of your work for today. So I hope you are enjoying this beautiful weather this week, and we'll see you all very soon tomorrow for our Zoom meeting. Okay, bye-bye.